The reading that we will meditate on this afternoon comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse 50. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on the immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. This is the word of the Lord. At the beginning of this pandemic time, the men of this congregation that meets on Saturdays, and at that time it was just once a month, now we do it every other, every other Saturday, and we do it really early at 6 a.m., but we've done daylight savings time of 7 a.m. during the winter. Um, as all this started, we didn't know what to make of it, as I'm guessing all of you didn't know what to make of what was going on in the world. We had never been through something quite like this, and we didn't know what to make of all the information. Was this the plague of epic proportions? Um, was everyone going to die? Were we going to die if we walked outside? I remember taking a walk after the first things were coming. I'm like, is it airborne? And, you know, like... You just had no idea. You had no idea the extent because of the way it was being talked about. When we were all locking down, we didn't know. But right during that time, we met, as this was all just starting, the toilet paper craze was happening, it all seemed kind of silly even then. And we sat around, and I had this document that I had gotten from Asia Lutheran Seminary. They had put together some words from Luther. Luther had written this article about going through an epidemic. And how to respond. How to be a Christian in days of an epidemic. And we read through that. I mean, those are some powerful words. If there was a guy who was not afraid to say what he felt, <laughs> it was Luther. And he talked a lot. You could fill up bookshelves and bookshelves of all of his books. But when he was writing about how to respond to an epidemic, he said in there for himself, he said, I don't fault everyone. Who leaves town because the plague's going through and and this is a very different beast than what we're going through with COVID-19. I mean you had 60 percent of the population dead. 60 percent. It's crazy. You have bodies everywhere and you died within 24 hours off it. That's how quick the onset was and how quickly it would kill you. And it was the same thing where you could be in contact and, you know, it was, just, it was very, very contagious, very easy to get sick. And he said, well, you know, if, if people need to leave and get out of the city, do it. You know, if that, if that is a way for you to protect yourself and your family, go. And everyone kept telling him to go. He said, no. Martin Luther, you're important. People need to hear you. You need to stay alive. And his answer was, I am called to these people. I have been called by God to give them the word of life. I have to. In other words, he was summoned by the master to go against his natural instinct to hide or to just think about physical safety, even though his own daughter died. He said, no, I, I have to do my job of giving them the gospel. And he also said of those Christians, 
the best place to be. He understands if, if we need to be in different places and we're making these decisions. However, I have a hard time not thinking that if we're faced with death as dangerous as this, that there is over a 50% chance that we will die. You know where I think you should be? In church every day. That was what he wrote. Why? Because if you're faced with death, you should prepare for death. You should prepare to die. <laughs> We're talking about pessimism all day. That sounds like pessimism to me. But guess what? What, has, what is the rate of death? Unless Jesus returns. 100%. Each and every one of us will die. So, the best thing we can do is prepare for it. And that doesn't mean apathy, or just making a legacy of money, or hoping that people will remember us for five years, ten years, maybe a hundred, if we're extra special. Do you remember your ancestors a hundred years past? No. Instead, we prepare to death by storing up our treasures in heaven by knowing who it is that raises us from death to life. We prepare for death by being able to say these words, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Because the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death, you can't have me. I love the way Julia said it. Tote, you can't tote me. <laughs> death, you can't death me. How did Jesus say it? I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though they die. The one who believes in me will live. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's your Christian faith. That's the ultimate goal of our faith, is not to live forever here. Guess what? We won't. We know that. We know our days are numbered. But with Christ, we will live forever. And those who have gone before us are there waiting for us. They stand in that throng before the Lamb, singing his praises. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Alleluia. Alleluia. Who deserves praise and glory and honor. <laughs> that's our goal, Christians. That's what we prepare for, and that's what we're preparing others for. That's what we're needed for in this life. To preach the gospel, the good news that death has no power over those who put their hope in Jesus Christ, who has won for us the victory over every enemy, who will stand on the earth and declare, I am king. And as Revelation says, every knee will bow. That's what gives us the confidence, the motivation to get up and fight our sin, to get up and be a good father, be a good husband, be a good Christian, be a good citizen, all of those things. What motivates us is not us being able to pat ourselves on the back at the end of the day or to look ourselves in the mirror and say, hey, you were perfect today. <laughs> no, today you, you lived, you gave it your all, but at the end of the day, you lived as if your life maybe depended on it, but at the end of the day, you went to sleep knowing none of it depended on you. It's already been won through Christ. So, as you leave today, remember that you are filled with life. That's why you are needed. You're filled with the Word. You're filled with the light. You are filled with the life, the eternal life, Jesus Christ. Nothing can touch you. Not even death. Don't be afraid. Amen.